Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've done quite a bit since the last um, the last episode. I feel like I've made some, made some actual progress, which is nice. Um, the, there's three main things I want to talk about today. The first one is increasing the amount of mining I've got happening in Realm of Shadows. So in the previous few um, episodes, I had um, I originally set up this at this mining facility here, where we've got a spaceship landing that takes that picks up the crushed aquatite, takes it away, brings in and brings in sulfur and iron that get passed down here, turned into sulfuric acid, and then that's used for the mining uh, of the of the uh, of the um, aquatite. And originally, I set up this mine here. <coughs> Then added in a second one down here because it was still a bit too slow. And then after that I put in a, a small train system up here where we've got a drop-off station here and a very small train depot at the top here. And that allows me to, to, uh, to allow me to build up this mine over here that's that's then producing the naquitite, it's filling up the uh, chests here. And then a train comes along here, picks it up, brings it over here, drops it off here where it get, then gets crushed and turned into, uh, in, into the crushed naquitite which we can then load onto the spaceship. Now, that wasn't um, producing it quickly enough for my liking. These, these spaceships were sitting here for quite a long time before they'd actually fill up. And most of these um, crushers aren't actually being, weren't, weren't being used a lot of the time. So you can see a train, train pulls in, it unloads here. We get a nice, nice uh, th heavy flow through here. Which feel, this, this, I think, is actually enough to get all of the crushers working. But it's slightly hard to tell because they have to fill up their internal buffers. And because the uh, naquatite is so uh, voluminous, it doesn't really... You don't get enough of it coming in on the train to really fill up all of the buffers in here. So it, it, it's kind of hard to tell exactly what's going on. But there wasn't enough coming in. So I came back out here with a massive quantity of space rail. And I built up all of this along here. Uh, which allows the train to trundle all the way out, out this way. <clears throat> and then further out here I've got an extra, mi an extra mine here and then an extra two over here. So all of these are now digging up Naquitite hopefully. At least this, this one is. Um, this one, this one is not yet because it hasn't had any acid delivered. And th this one, this one isn't, but it has an acid train on the way in, I assume. I, I, I think that's probably why that's gone yellow. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so there's a train here filling up with acid, which means we've finally produced enough to load up a train. I hope. <laughs> and we've got the sort of the, the fluid positioning problem in this, where all the fluid has gone, where uh, the fluid isn't is, isn't evenly distributed between the tanks, so the uh, the train isn't filling up quite as neatly as it, as it might, but it will eventually have, there will eventually be enough here to fill this train up. Um, in fact, let's just dispatch this now, send it over there. That will bring the acid out here. This 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 mining facility will then start mining. We'll have another place that's producing the um, producing the aquatite. Now, because of the amount of aquatite I'm, I'm requesting, this train should be tra not this train. The uh, the this train should be travelling more or less all the time, and it's still not actually producing enough to uh, to keep this system happy. So what I think I need to do here is put in some sort of um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, stacker for the for the trains to wait in while they're while they're um, while they're loading up, and then they'll, then they'll be able to just sort of trundle around and they'll they'll be able to queue up somewhere around here and then go in here uh, and we'll have multiple trains coming in here and dropping off. So hopefully we'll be able to get a, a slightly faster throughput on on the trains going on and get a bit more of the um, the the Nacrushan aquatite happening here, <coughs> and thereby loading up the. Um, the, the spaceship down here. As you can see, this one is this one's currently well. It's nearly half full. When these get to 5,000 each, then it starts loading the second um, set of warehouses. Then when those get to 5,000 each, then the ship can finally will have enough and it'll finally take off. And if we have a look, the other sh one of these ships is it's nearly halfway. It's nearly back to Kalida, so that means it's it's approaching halfway. So actually, this system is running almost quickly enough. Um, it's by the time this ship is back and ready to pick up some more, the other ship will probably have filled up and be ready to head out and come back, bring bring all the uh, the Naquatite back to Kalidas. So this is kind of basically working, I think, sort of more or less. <laughs> um, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm phrasing it like that because it's a little bit. There's there's still a few things that I want to improve up here, but basically the system is working. We're getting Naqu Na the Naquium brought through at a reasonable rate. So the next thing I, I, I did, um, actually this is probably in reverse order, but another thing I did, was, so I've been thinking I want to improve the number of um, modules basically everywhere in the Nacotite production so that we can get the stuff pumped through a bit more um, a bit more effectively so we can create a bit more of it because at the moment we've only got 26 in here. We're not producing Naquium fast enough. So I reckon if I go through, put better modules in, some more speed, more productivity, maybe some more efficiency ones just to keep the... Um, 
keeping the power consumption to sensible levels, then I can get that. I can get all of this working a bit more effectively without needing to do enormous amounts more uh, processing. But in order to do that, I need a better supply of decent modules. So up here, I've started making all of the all of the modules from basically from scratch. And this uses incredible quantities of green circuits. I mean, you, you've seen my, this is all the stuff that goes into a tier 6 module diagram. Well, here it is. And it's kind of crazy. Um, but you get you put absolutely phenomenal quantities of green circuits in. And lots of red circuits, lots of blue circuits. As you can see here, we've got a, st a stream of um, assembly machines here. Building up the tier 1 modules as fast as they can. Which is it's a reasonable rate. I mean, these things are being made slowly. But because the uh, but we're basically limited by the quantity of green circuits we can pump through here, and that's limited by how fast we can get the trains coming through. Because as you can see, we've we're now waiting for a blue circuit train to come in as well. So maybe I need a separate station for unloading green circuits, just because there's so many of them churning through here and and, uh, and getting used up. But anyway, those are then being going on to make the tier two modules of each type, then the tier three modules, and they the tier three modules require batteries as well, so we're bringing them in from the station in a normal way. Then we started making the tier four modules, and these I've put one one per one uh, one of the, I've given them each, each of them a separate row because there's extra inputs along here, so it gets a bit more complicated. So here we're bringing in the um, machine learning data and the vulcanite to make the tier four productivity modules, machine learning data and holmium ingots to turn into holmium plates to make the tier four um, efficiency modules, and the same here with iridium for the tier four uh, speed modules, and those are all being brought in by another station. Then the tier 5 modules, these require the science catalogs. So we've got the tier 1 catalogs, the biological for, for productivity, the uh, mechanical for um, speed, and the energy for efficiency. And so those are all being brought in here by, by this station. And then we're making more and more, we're making higher and higher tier modules, but these are coming out a lot slower because they require more and more exotic materials to make them. Then finally, then next up we get on to the um, tier 5 um, modules. We've got speed, efficiency and productivity along here, the, these three. We're churning all of those out, putting them onto belts. But again, these go much, much more slowly because they take they take longer to make. They take 32 seconds to make. But also, they require th each module requires three of the previous tier. So this one requires three speed module 4s. Speed module 4 requires three uh, speed module 3s and so on. So... I was told that based on the um, the ratios, and I haven't actually done the maths myself, but I'm going to I'm going to believe it. You require something like 26 of each of the um, each of the tier one module machines in order to keep one tier nine module making machine running flat out. Um, I'll check the maths and report back in the in the comments on the on the video. But I haven't gone but I haven't gone quite that far. So we've got then we've got tier six here that that uses the um, the tier is this tier two yeah tier two um, catalogs, tier seven up here. Which uses the tier three catalogs, and then tier, finally, tier, finally for now, tier eight up here, which uses the tier four catalogs. So these are getting more and more expensive, and these ones as well also require um, the what are these? These are the um, what are these? Superconductive cables, except for the productivity modules, which require require neural gel. So there's lots and lots of more exotic materials needed as you go further up the system. But using my basic railway system. Um, with these six station, uh, six six item drop off stations, it's not going too badly. The main problem, I think, is that these three module three module types are they're not being unloaded quickly enough because there aren't enough inserters to do it. So I think yes, having another station here that does green circuits and probably red circuits as well, um, with the with different numbers of unloaders, and then I can have this one just doing the, these four inserters. No, all these six inserters, in fact, doing blue and blue circuits. So, yeah, I, I think I'll come in and do that next time. But for now, it is working. It's just, there's just a bit of sort of, it jams up a little bit. So this one brings in all of the components needed for tiers 1, 2, 3, and a couple of the ones for 4. This brings in the rest of the things required for tier 4. This one does 5 and 6. Or this one do 5, 6 and 7. And this one does 8. So it gets more and more complicated, more and more stuff as you go further up. But it's, but none of this is particularly difficult. Um, conveniently, because of the way I've got the science being done, all of these catalogues are already on the train system. So it was easy enough to send a train over to wherever and just pick up the appropriate modules here, as we've done. 
Uh, this is now apparently ground to a halt. I'll need to investigate that at some point. But the, there was a, there was enough mo there were enough modules in here for the train to just swoop in, gather them all up, and take them away to be made into modules. And the same up here for energy data. We had um, we had tra tra stations full of modules. It's easy enough to sw swoop in and just take them all away. Um, as I say, I will have to have a look at this and work out why all of these have failed. It looks like we've run out of memory cards, so that's. Um, unfortunate, but that is going to affect absolutely everything. They're being made here at at, at an appropriate rate, but it looks like I've put a sudden massive demand on this on the um, on the whole science system by by claiming a train load of each type of module, and it's taking us a little while to catch up. So that's that's not too surprising if we think about the number of module the number of data cards that are held in all of these catalogs. Um, it's quite a lot. So let's see, we've got we've got all four tiers of three of them. So that's 12, 12 types of catalog. And we pulled in 2,000 of each, so that's uh, 24,000 catalogs, um, each of which has a um, four memory, four data cards in it. So we've just pulled in, we've just sucked up 100,000 data cards from the factory. No wonder things are struggling. Hopefully that'll all catch up. We shall see how it goes. I might need to keep an eye on that, but that because that is a crazy amount we've just sucked in. But it does, it is all, it is now all working. Um, it just needs to fill up all of the buffers again. As you can see up here, we've now got a few of these tier 8 modules come through. We've got a whole three of the efficiency ones, five speed ones, and six productivity ones. So it is a very, very slow process. But eventually, but they are coming through, and they are eventually being made. There were a couple of extra things I needed to make all of this. I needed to get the neural gel being picked up from biological science, which is down here. So I put in an extra fluid pickup station here, which was easy enough I just need to tap off from from where it was being from this pipe that's carrying it from where it's made up here and just tap it off into these tanks simple the train gun comes along and picks it up the superconductive cables were similar along here they're being made on the on the bus system here and I just brought them up pulled off a station here and they'll just load into a station so a train can come along and pick them up this is all fairly easy because I've got these things being made in quite large quantities and even if I didn't already have them on the train system it was easy enough to add them so so that wasn't too bad <laughs> it was yeah it was it was basically okay We've now and, and I've now and I now have a system building the modules up. Granted, a bit slowly, but by the time I come back over here, I can pick all of these up. I can take them off and start making them into the more advanced modules. The other thing I can do is I can scoop up all of these systems that I threw together earlier for making um, making the higher the more advanced modules. Now, granted, these only go up to six, not eight, but at least there's 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 ten tier eight modules, tier six modules in there. And there's a few bits and pieces down here as well. So if I scoop up all of this, I can then take that off, dump it into the um, in, into the module production facilities I was just showing you, and that will at least give it a little bit of a nudge in the right direction, I guess. Um, there's still some way to go, obviously, but it'll it, it'll 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 help a little bit. So yeah, I think I'll do that in the next in the next uh, stream. The third thing I did, and possibly the most exciting i'm not i'm not sure whether it really i'm not sure i'm not sure how exciting it is but i went out to fenestra and i had a, a and i met someone in in the um in in discord told me how to get the ship to re to spawn again even though i'd accidentally deleted it so i came out here and i thought yeah let's strip this of all its useful stuff because there's there's lots of stuff here surely some of this is going to be useful so i came over uh, landed here again and i started dismantling it but it turns out the only stuff i was able to dismantle was um spaceship flooring or or um space scaffolding that didn't have anything on it all of these things count as belonging to a different player or to an enemy at least i can't open them i can't harvest them i can't do anything with them um so at the moment this is just sitting here there's some resources here that i would quite like to recover like these the deep space belts i haven't made those myself so they'd be quite nice to have um these uh t flat solar panel threes and the naquium accumulators would be nice to have because i've researched them i can in theory make them but they're so expensive these are lots of naquium so I'm, I'm i'm basically i'm not going to um, and then there's lots and lots of scrap in all of these chests. There's loads of spaceship wall, loads of spaceship doors, and just having all of this stuff and being able to recycle it in, on my, um, in my in my um, in my space, space station would it just be rather nice? Because I all of this would be very very useful for future construction. 
but I can't pick any of it up. So I might look into um, commands you can trigger on in the game to to just to, to switch things over to be to belonging to you. In which case, I can then come out and claim all of this because apparently you're supposed to be able to. You're supposed to be able to just land here, claim up, s s scoop up the entire thing, and bring it back and bring it back for use on in your own facility. So I would like to do that, but sadly at the moment that's a bit out of reach. I've done a few other little things as well. For example, I've got I've now got this ship bringing out um, ammunition for the um, for the meteorite defence cannons. Um, so we've got a couple of hundred in here. We, we're requesting more through the same system that's requesting the, the the sulfur and the iron for the for the sulfuric acid. So they just get brought out in the spaceship with all the rest of the stuff. It's filtered off here, and I've got a couple of guns here that will be able to just maintain keep the. Um, keep the place defended. I'm hoping that two of these guns will be enough because I don't think you get very many meteor strikes out here in, in sort of the deep space area. Uh, so cautiously optimistic? If not I might sort of attempt to rejig this so that I can perhaps, I can certainly squeeze three um, of these cannons around. I could put another one here or rather move the whole thing off and put so just get three of them around it with one filling it up. Um, more than that would be slightly tricky because I'd need to use um, additional chests but I could get four without too much difficulty. Maybe even five would be tricky. Yeah, it's, it, it's going to be a little bit a little bit awkward, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, we'll see we'll see if two is enough because I've not taken too much damage here. But there was a, there was a meteorite strike here which has damaged these rocks. It destroyed some belt here, so I came out and I repaired that while I was out here. And I think there was a bit of track or another bit of pipe or something like that that had taken some damage earlier. So. I do need to be able to, to repair the stuff out here, um, or rather I need to stop it getting damaged in the first place. So that's the thing I would like to do. I suppose I could put in a roboport about here um, with, with with a few construction bots and some repair packs in, and a few bits of belt and whatnot, just in case. But I'm not going to be able to cover the whole thing, so I don't know whether it's really worth it. I think that's pretty much everything I've done. Um, Oh, I've bumped up the amount of sulfur that's being brought out by these spaceships because we've got these buffer tanks to fill up and I've got a huge amount of buffer space in these three warehouses. So I've increased it to 40,000. So we should get a decent amount of that being brought out by the uh, by the next ship that comes. And as it is, as you can see, we've, we've run out because all of the problem, the problem is the acid gets made here. Sure, great, fine. Um, it then gets pumped off into these tanks, and that seems to be the, that is currently set as the priority, which means trains then the trains then come along and take it off to all the other um, the other mining sites, which is great because they keep working. But it does mean that this one and this one run out of acid and they just grind to a halt. Now, probably what I should have done is put in a tank here and had the pipe go off separately and use pumps and things to filter it off in the different directions. And to be honest, I think I should still do that. In fact, let, so if I can in fact, come down here to here, pull up those and replace, replace them with a pump. That will now ensure that down there always has a decent amount of acid. Actually, let's put in a tank down there as well. So put in a tank in here somewhere. Um, is there anywhere I can actually attach it without having to do some shenanigans? Yes, there is there. Put that there. So that will now that will now be filled up, and then that will act as a buffer that keeps all of these mining drills running. And if I go up here, I can put in a tank here. I can put in a pump here. And I can put in an. Oops, that's not what I meant. And another pipe going up here like this. Link it up like that. And then this pipe will now run run up here, and this will be the one that feeds into the uh, into the into the stations up there. So I can put in. Is that going to be a 15? Yeah, that's a 15 easily enough. Put that there. Um, let's go hit here actually. Here actually shoving a pipe down here like that and these short pipes have a connection on the side of them as well so that will that will link up and then fill the gap up here right so now we've got a system system up here so all of these are being are using pumps to take to, to pull the acid out in those directions and this is no longer and, and these two are no longer running off what's off the off the tank essentially I could flip that round actually for now let's let's pull the pull the acid back out of the station for a bit get these running get some of the um, vulcanite being produced and then we can uh, we can use that to, um, to to get this ship filled up then when they swap over again I'll be able to flip it back round again and that'll uh, al al then allow the station to fill up and ho hopefully everything will then just start to work nicely but we'll see how that goes. 
Another thing I did was upgrade to the latest build of the Space Exploration mod pack, and there's been a couple of changes I've noticed. The first one is that we've now got this um, funky jetpack that um, just appears out of my um, out of my backpack when I when I take off, and then when I land, it just disappears again, which is looks looks cool anyway. The second one is there seems to be some graphical glitchery going on. Um, so when you're in normal mode, if it's dark, the shields don't draw properly, and just it seems to generally be a bit darker than it should be. I've gone into the AAI mod pack settings and turned the brightness up to brighter. So in in um, in the mod settings, there's an option in here to set the night LUT set. So I've set it to bright. You've got vanilla, bright, and dark, and I think something else. Um, I've set it to bright, and it is now bright. It's definitely brighter. I can see see better, which is good for streaming and videos and stuff like that. So I think I'll leave it like that. But there's still this sort of weird corruption going on, and it, things just don't look quite right. They look a bit too high contrast and a bit sort of burnt. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but I'm pretty sure it happened when the uh, when the new version of the mod came in. So maybe I, I'm assuming it's related to that. Maybe another a later release will fix it. We shall see. So I think that's everything I have for you. Those are the th the three main things I've been up to. I've ex massively expanded my uh, vulcanite mining. I've started building modules in enormous quantities, and I've started um, and oh yeah, and I went back out to Finestra to have a look at the spaceship and didn't really find very much there. I have, of course, I, I did a little bit of sort of further thinking about um, Deep Space Science 2, um, but this is largely waiting for, I think, I, I imagine it's probably waiting for, um, oh, what's happened here? This is, this looks jammed. Yes, this is jammed up on, um, on these, um, uh, what do you call them, it's, uh, what do you call them? It's memory cards, which I was hoping wouldn't happen because I was hoping they'd be used up by this as fast as fast as they were being used up at the generator at the other end. In fact, this looks like it's stopped. Why is this stopped? Because it's full. Oh, oh! I need to put the inserter back in there because I took it out to make sure that it wouldn't be using these cards. Oh, right, I, mean, I took it out to make sure it wouldn't use cards from here because I needed it to need it to use the cards that are coming up here, and then I've got to put the inserter in. So this is ground to a halt. So, yeah, this is. Um, a bit dumb, but at least I know what's causing it. I can come along and fix that fairly easily once I come back to uh, once I come back to Norvis, and that'll fix this one here, and it'll fix this one here because these are the ones that are coming down from up there that I'm not unloading. Okay, and then we can start making the Deep Space Science two packs again and get to have a bit more than 300 of them. Once I, and when that finally gets up to 2,000, they can be brought up here. Uh, no, up here. And we can start making the Deep Space Science 2 actual science packs and do this Arcosphere research that um, is waiting to be done. So, oops, and I'll fix that in the, in the, in the next stream. So, yes, streams. Come along on Wednesday evenings. Join me for the uh, for the Factorio Space Exploration stream. That starts at 7.30 UK time, and I'll just sort of work through the... Uh, I'll, I'll play for about three or four hours and um, hopefully get some of the stuff I've been talking about sorted. There's also a Minecraft stream on Mondays where we're playing the Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles pack. That was that um, is that's a pack that sort of makes Minecraft a bit more Factorio-y. Um, so we're getting quite a lot of automation, quite a lot of fancy recipes, and also quite a lot of magic happening at the moment. So uh, yeah, come along and have a look at that if you're interested. It, it's, it, it's proving to be quite fun at the moment, and there's and there's several of us playing, which means I've got, I've got some other people to talk to as well as as well as the um, the uh, Twitch chat, which is yeah, maybe it, it 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 it's quite nice having having more opinions around. I think. Then Saturdays and Sundays we have the summary videos coming out, as I'm sure you're very aware. And on Thursdays we've got the GTA videos coming out. I did actually release another um, f a Friday video this uh, this week, which was a tutorial on how to make how to make a how to make and automate a basic spaceship. So one that's basically one of, one of these sort of these sort of tier of spaceships. So if you're if you're playing space exploration and you're wondering how to how to get going on this sort of thing, uh, so that's, then that's definitely worth checking out. Have a look at it, see what you think. See if you've got any. If, if you do spaceships differently, let me know. If you've got other improvements you reckon I could make then again let me know and let, let, let me know in the video comments and uh, you can help other people out as well right as always thank you for watching don't forget to check out everything else on the channel and I'll see you next time <laughs>